Hey YouTube, JP Dillon. Welcome to part 6 of the infamous Chroma Color 2 video problems. Now, from what I've been able to determine so far, it has nothing to do with the feedback circuit. The feedback circuit is running. Uh, but what we're not achieving here is we're not achieving proper black level, not proper brightness. And uh, we've been over this board quite a bit. And here's the schematic diagram. And if I can position the light here. So I've determined that the third video amp here, 904, is not the culprit by substitution. All of the DC voltages on this circuit are okay. And then somebody pointed out to me, well, you're troubleshooting video, and so you want to look at it from the standpoint of AC and not DC. And some quick troubleshooting would be to ground the base of Q902, which is the brightness limiter circuit, and see if any change occurs there. Uh, 902 could be leaky. Uh, the 47 microfarad capacitor could be leaky. That diode there, CR902, could be defective. Uh, and that may not necessarily pull the DC voltage down so much as it would disturb the video signal also. Uh, the video coming in here on 69 through 71 that's going through this RC network here is determining uh, basically how the, how the video response is supposed to look. So C911 there, the 100 picofarad is of a, something to look at. The 25 microfarad non-polarized, got to look at that. As far as I remember, none of the resistors were off value. And then we come down here to the brightness circuit uh, itself. And that, if it'll focus there, there we go. I'm getting proper DC voltages here. Uh, between 73 and 74, I don't see a diode for isolation on the machine, uh, which they would label as CR902, but that's weird because now they got CR902 up there. Uh, so, yeah gotta look at that too and then we have to look at the other problem with these machines and that is if there's a loss of vertical uh, pulses it will blank the video to prevent a blind from being burnt into the screen and again the DC voltages here on these devices were closed but we have to look at blanking pulses and stuff like that so I think what we're going to do to start is focus on uh, the brightness limiter transistor, see if that's bad. See if the CR902, if I can find it, is defective. Check that 47 microfarad capacitor, the 25 microfarad, blah, blah, blah. Basically, just go over and com check components one by one until we find the bad one, if we find the bad one. And then if not, we have to drag out the scope and we have to look at the incoming video signal, look at the vertical blinking interval pulses and see if they're present and see if all that circuitry is working. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to find something of importance uh, that will lead us to get our brightness back. Because if you go back a couple of videos, you see that on occasion the screen will flicker, and it will flicker white, and it will get brighter momentarily. But So something's trying to work. We just don't know what yet. And they're saying between 73 and 74, and I'm looking here on the numbering system, and I'm not seeing it there. 73 and 74 and then if we come over here to the luminance board outboard here again I'm not seeing 73 or 74 maybe you guys can I'm not seeing it so I'm not sure what they're talking about there they say CR902 uh, and let's see here there's 901 which is down there, and 902 looks like a jumper. CR902 looks like a jumper, so that's... But also, if you look in that same position here, CR902, they show as a jumper, so... Yeah, not sure there. Uh, and then pin 84. Uh, so maybe there's a misprint here. In 84, that diode there is supposed to be CR901, which would go to the back side of a 3900 ohm resistor. Uh, but yeah... I'm just going to start pulling and checking things and then we'll go from there and see if we can turn up anything. Alright, so problem number one. 
the 47 microfarad capacitor here, this will focus, C904, as you can see, is not charging up, it gets to a certain point and then stops. So that's concern number one. And just so you can see the difference in what a new part looks like, if I can get the uh, probe on here, excuse me. We're going to see if this one charges up, because this is a new part. And you can see it's slowly charging. Let's see if it gets past that 70 mark. If I can keep my probes on there long enough. Come on. Yeah, see it continuously charges up, whereas the other one just kind of stopped there at the 70 ohm mark. So this is a good capacitor. This just keeps charging. So uh, this is decidedly bad. That's problem number one. So the next thing I'll do, uh, in fact, this uh, diode here at the bottom of the 39, 3.9K resistor, which is this guy, is conveniently hiding under this part. That little diode there uh, is connected to the low side of that resistor. The resistor up there is connected to that diode and then to ground. So that's our limiter diode. We're going to pull and check that and see if that has leakage. All right, so problem number two uh, is the non-polarized 25 microfarad capacitor, which I've got hooked up with clip leads here. And initially, we're okay until we get into the higher ranges, and you can start to see a little bit of leakage. And then when we get up in there, we get a lot of leakage and slow to charge. I don't think this would cause the lack of brightness. I think this would cause poor video response. But as you can see, it's very, very slowly charging, if at all. I wonder what the LCR meter says about it. So not only is it leaky, but it, the LCR meter is measuring it at 46.4 microfarads. So that's really going to screw with the video amp circuitry. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to replace that too. But since I don't have a 25 microfarad non-polarized on hand, so I'm going to put two 47s in series, which will yield me about maybe 23 and a half, which is pretty damn close. So then what we'll have to look forward to, I've already checked C911, which is the 100 picofarad, which is 104 picofarads, no leakage up to about 100 volts, so that's fine. Uh, CR902, the little diode thingamachigus is fine, no leakage there. I've already tested C904, I tested C90, or, uh, excuse me, Q904 and Q902 are both fine with no leakage, decent betas. Uh, all of those resistors are still within tolerance. So I think now I'm going to come down here and take a look very briefly at our blanking circuit and make sure that CR901 is not leaky and Q901 tests okay and we'll see if anything turns up there. Okay another probable point of failure was when I was checking uh, this capacitor here which is C907 which feeds the vertical pulses to the video blanking circuit. Uh, the capacitor itself uh, tested okay, I replaced it anyways. However on the low side of it where it attaches to this resistor this connection was uh, touchy. It wasn't there, not enough solder, it was a cold solder. I could kind of wiggle it. And that definitely would have pissed things off a little bit. Uh, so if we're not getting vertical pulses, it's going to blank the screen. Uh, so I touched the solder up on that and replaced that capacitor and we're going to see uh, if that has any contributing factor. Not really known at this time whether it does or not. And then you've got Q905, which is your blanking amplifier. And then you've got uh, Q903 over here, which is your final driver that pulls down the uh, brightness. So we're going to check these two as well and see if they're defective. Very likely not, since most of the other ones have been okay, but that's why we're checking them. And then uh, 
if that pans out 901 which is your uh, blanking check diode your steering diode we're going to check that for leakage too okay so I pulled and I tested all the remaining semiconductors and the only one that gave me problems was Q903 uh, and looking at Q903 on the schematic that's your final blinking driver. It had a very low beta, but I don't think that that would cut the brightness. Uh, it might make it harder to blink the system because of the lack of gain, but I changed it anyways to something uh, with a beta of about 160 to 170. Uh, I checked CR901, which was good, no leakage. None of the remaining transistors had a problem. All good betas, no leakage, no problems there. Um, I checked all the little small value capacitors, all which appear to be good. Uh, so the only real concern was, other than that loose solder connection, was C904, which was decidedly leaky, and uh, C903, which was also very leaky. So we're going to see if changing those two has any effect on the failure and hope that it does, because otherwise I'm not sure where else to go except drag out the scope and see where the waveforms deteriorate here. So let's put it back in and see what happens. Alright, so as you can see, we don't have a damn bit of change. Not one. Everything is exactly as it was before. Uh, we got that automatic brightness limiter going on. It gets bright momentarily and then tones it down. You can see the little flickers of white in the screen. Well, and on it doesn't really change anything. When I turn the brightness up, you can definitely hear things going on. Beam current goes way up. Interesting. So yeah, I'm not sure where to go from here other than check waveforms and things or just deal with the fact that we're not going to be able to turn the black level all the way up. Very strange. So there's our board. I'm almost tempted to find another 988 module and just put it in there and see what happens there. Uh, but nominally right now, not much else I can think of to do. Okay, so looking outside the box, I want to come up to this point here, W3, which is also known as uh, number 77, which is right there. And I've got my test lead hooked up there. And according to this, I am supposed to have 12 volts there, 12.52 at that entry point there under the normal operating conditions. Uh, but right now, with normal brightness, I've got 7 volts. Now if I turn the brightness down, you can see that voltage go way up. In fact, if I turn it all the way down, we get 24 volts there, unloaded. When we start to get luminance on the screen, so right about there is where we should see something. And as, as we can see, that's a dark raster. Uh, now granted, there's video information on that line, but we should see a steady 12 volts there. And as we turn up the video information, that voltage drops tremendously. So I have to take a look at the supply line which feeds that circuit there. Which, according to that, is part of pin 4 of the power supply. Okay, so looking at that board, where I'm supposed to have 12.5 volts coming in under normal circumstances, it's down to about 7. And that changes with the amount of video information that I inject in there. Uh, so we're looking at, it's coming from the number 4, power supply line. And when we come down to the number 4 power supply line we see that it's coming directly off of that 24 volt regulator there, Q201. 
and uh, I'm not sure, I don't think, well, maybe it is. Maybe that's the one that's hanging out there, the 220 on the back of the chassis. Uh, but I was getting a constant 24 volts at the emitter, uh, at the emitter there. So the fact that I was getting voltage here, but yet uh, if I go uh, back up to the luminance, which is over here, uh, at this point here, the entry point to that card, I'm only getting about 7 volts there. So we take a look at what that, that could be about. And basically all I see that there is, is we've got a power supply line that comes in. And we've got our two brightness controls, whether the chromatic's on or off. And then that goes up right there. So the thing to check would be, uh, obviously, uh, I don't see how that 220 ohm resistor could go down in value. So that probably wouldn't be it. So I'm guessing that there's some sort of interruption here. And really what I'd have to do is to look at the voltage at the high side of the brightness control, which is going to suck because that's very inaccessible. I need to trace out where the wire goes and then uh, see what comes out of the brightness control uh, and then what goes up here and then of course uh, check the other DC voltages there which I think were within specification we just that's something that we have to look at so but the fact that this voltage here uh, drops and I mean really drops uh, drops to nothing uh, makes me wonder what's going on there because as you start to feed in start to turn up the brightness this voltage goes way down I don't know if that has anything to do with why it's screwing up but I'm guessing it is because considering that's a regulated voltage one would think that at that voltage would remain constant and this voltage would remain constant unless there's something going on here in this network uh, like you've got that little tiny capacitor there. Can't even really see what that is. The scan's not very good. Uh, so that that capacitor could be shorted uh, on the preset thing, but you would think that would only show up on the preset setting rather than the normal setting, because without that it's bypassing, that's just going through the normal setting. Anyway, stuff to think about. We're going to have to figure out uh, why that voltage is going away. So look at the voltage coming in on the high side of the controls and then see if that goes away as I turn the, the brightness up. Because if so, then we have to look at this line here and see if there's a resistance in the line or a problem in the line or something like that. We have to see if this 23.6 volts stays 23.6 through all conditions. And it should because it's coming right off of that regulator. So yeah, more stuff to look at. All right, so taking a closer look at this circuit here, let's see if I can get the light in a better position for you. So pin four is our supply voltage, which comes in over here. And I've checked this, and I'm getting a solid 23.6 volts. It's actually about 24. And then coming up here, you have R921 which is supposed to be a 2.2K resistor up to 0.77. Now at 0.77, that was the area where I was measuring the low voltage. And it went up as the brightness control was turned up. Uh, I check here. This is good. All these values here. And this is not open and all this is happy. However, R921, which is supposed to be 2.2K is not 2.2K. In fact, if we look over here on the board, R921, which is that guy right there, if you read the color codes, excuse me for bumping the camera, that's blue, gray, red, gold. Which, from my understanding, means that it's a 6, 8 times 10 to the 2, so that would be 6,800 or 6.8K. And the gold band is, I believe, a five, a one percent or five percent tolerance. Yeah, that I forget. 
But anyway, that's supposed to be a 2.2K, according to the schematic, and it's a 6.8K. So that makes me wonder if this set has always had this problem. Because that would reduce the current enough uh, from that voltage input uh, for it not to work very well. So I think we're going to change that to a 2.2K and see if that improves our brightness at all. Because from what I read on the schematic here, that ain't 2200 ohms, and it's supposed to be. So that would limit the current from the 23.6-volt uh, supply and cut it down quite a lot, uh, which would have less influence on the uh, video amplification stage. Also, uh, I take that back, R916 here has gone way up in value too. That's supposed to be 470. It's currently measuring about 530 ohms, so I'm going to change that one too. So let's change those two components and see if we get any change. Alright, we're going to see if this makes it any better. I'm just waiting for it to warm up right now. It actually made it worse, it appears. Don't know how. Of course, it's still kind of warming up, so let's see here. Let me get a meter real quick and see uh, what voltages we're getting on that pin now. Okay, so now at full brightness, I've got 8 volts there rather than 7. But I've also got a dimmer picture. Now if I turn the brightness down, what does this go up to now? It goes up to 11 volts. And if I turn the brightness all the way down, it's 24 volts. Alright, so we've actually made the problem worse. Maybe somebody stuck that resistor in there to deal with that problem. So that wasn't it either. So let's take a look at what's behind the board and see uh, if there's anything I'm missing here behind where the board mounts. Okay, so now I'm only looking behind here. There's no signs of shorted or pinched wiring. Uh, I've momentarily checked that capacitor, which is in a voltage line for leakage, uh, but to no avail. Uh, all these little filters here for the adjacent boards seem to be fine. So I don't think it's anything over here that's having to do with that problem. At worst comes to worst, I may just brute force it and change that resistor value up to like 10K or something so that I can achieve some sort of regular brightness. Uh, but at the moment, this one's kind of stumping me. So here's another new symptom. See that? like I lost a filter momentarily or there's an intermittent short in one so that's something else I'll have to look at but right for right now uh, the brightness can problem I've just brute forced the circuit the voltage divider circuit and as you can see now I have nice black levels I changed that uh, 2.2 K resistor which was a 6.8 K resistor which I'm wondering if somebody tinkered with to improve the brightness. It's now 15K, and that makes it so that if I put my brightness control at the middle of the range, I get adequate brightness all the way up and down the scale. Uh, and the voltage is hovering around 11 volts at that test point. So, yeah, that's gonna be how it's going to be for now. Um, I do have my nice color, my nice rainbow color. It looks very nice. So uh, I may have to pull the power supply board and replace the remaining filters because that weird intermittent hum problem seems to be getting worse. Don't know what that's about yet. But so far, so good. It's got a nice picture on it. Or I could just wait for the power supply can to fail. It's obviously intermittently opening and I'm getting hum bars. Don't know if it's a loose connection or what, but for now it's running and I have got uh, adequate brightness just from brute forcing the circuit really. Let's see here, 
turn on the AFC. So yeah, this is about the middle of the range. Crank it up more, turn it down. So all the way down, midpoint, and all the way up. So I'm happy with that for now. So I think I'm just going to leave it be. And then we'll deal with the uh, something in the power supply. It looks like a filter is messing up because it gets hum bars when that happens. This thing is just full of fun and surprises. So I am making progress on it though, which is good. So realistically, uh, the next part of the series, if I do have a part of the series, I may just deal with whatever issue it has until it fails and then tear it apart. Maybe you'll see a part seven, maybe not. But for right now, it looks pretty. Let's see how it looks on live TV. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Nice bright colors. There's issues with the DC restoration a little bit, which kind of bugs me, but that could be a function of that crummy, crummy video problem. Not bad though. Let's see if I can actually find something with flesh tones on it, because it does a pretty good job of flesh tones. That's a little bit on the saturated side. There we go. Not bad. I could put up with that. Hmm, gotta love digital. Nice bright picture. It's not doing that scary blooming thing anymore. How it demodulates color is strange. Some things look perfectly normal and other things look really washed out. But otherwise it's looking good. I think I'm going to leave it be for now. The weird hum thing only occurs during initial warm up so I'm wondering if there's just some temperature related component there. Because I didn't notice any hot caps or anything like that in the power supply. Yeah. Zero emission, zero fun. Anyway. Ooh, look, channel one. Does nothing. So there's where we're at right now. It's working satisfactorily. I'm going to leave it be. Uh, I don't see any need to mess with it any further. I've achieved the picture results that I want. I might see about getting another 988 module, an updated version. Uh, the benefit to this one is that it's all discrete components, but obviously there's still something about it that's not quite right. So I may just grab another module to pop in there to see if that solves a lot of the problems with the DC restoration and whatnot. But otherwise, picture looks good. We've come a long way. Color looks good. Uh, I need to figure out what's going on that causes that intermittent hum when you start it up and then pops and goes away. This thing is just full of problems. I've owned many of these Chroma Color 2 sets, about maybe a, eight or nine of them, and this is the first one that I've come across that's really been a nightmare. So I'm really happy that we've gotten to this point and it looks this good. So I think maybe I'll just leave this one be for a while and just, you know, enjoy it. And when it does go into hard failure, then we'll work on it again. But for now, this is where we're at. Looking good. So uh, thanks for watching the series and putting up with it. 
Uh, I'm very happy that it's gotten to this point, and uh, I'm just going to sit back and watch it until something else goes wrong with it. So thanks for watching the videos. More stuff to come.